All right, so today we're going to be looking at the Allen & Heath SQ Mix Pad. So a couple things we need to know. First off, this SQ Mix Pad is a free app. You can get it for Windows, you can get it for Mac, you can get it for iPad, you can get it for Android. You go on to the Allen & Heath website and type in SQ Mix Pad and then download it for your appropriate device. The next thing you got to do is make sure that you're connected to the right Wi-Fi network. So we are down in the broadcast room right now, but actually it's all linked together. The only places you're going to get this network to show up is going to be in the broadcast room or down in the Yoakum room right now. In the future it's possible to add that over to the gym. Um, but if I go up to my Wi-Fi settings, you'll see I'm connected to LWAV 5G. So that's the network, either LWAV or LWAV 5G should connect you in. If you don't know the password to that, you have to ask somebody who has the password so you can type it in and get it on board. When you open up SQ MixPad, uh, here, let's just go ahead and open it so you see it. So I'm going to hit SQ MixPad and open that. And this is the screen you're going to see that we were just at. If for some reason you weren't connected when you open this app, click on the refresh button and it's going to go and find the broadcast options or the mixers. So you'll see there's an offline and an other mode. We don't want one of those. We should see either broadcast or Yoakum sound. So I'm going to take you over to Yoakum sound first and I'm going to hit connect. First thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you for a username and a password. Uh, on this particular one. There's a few. If you hit default, there is no password and you log in, it's going to load up a different scene. Or I can choose admin and if you know the admin password, once again, there's a document that has passwords that I'm not going to talk about on this video. Um, but you enter the password and log in and now you're actually controlling the SQ device. So from here, I'm going to give you a, a, a little tour of what exists. Over on the left is kind of like where you are here. It's a combination of uh, which group that you have here and also these little icons up at the top. So we're in the first eight of the inputs. Here's 9 through 16, here's 17 through 24, blah, 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 all the way down to um, some of the uh, stereo inputs that exist way over here. All the inputs are there. The mixes are like your outputs. So the groups happen to be in here as well, which we've used a drum group in the past. Uh, that has to be configured in the setting. You have to tell it how many processing channels go to group versus auxiliary mixes. We haven't done a whole lot of groups, but it does alter some things. So just be aware if you ever do it, look it up in the manual and learn what the consequences are. In your monitors, um, another in-ear monitor, and here's other outputs that are going on uh, here in these spaces. We have an effects returns, which are different than effects sends, um, some DCAs, mute groups, soft keys, or if you're working with this, so this is actually, I'm controlling the mixer over in the Yoakum room right now. If I wanted to hit custom, I could create my own custom strip that had information about what channel I want to see. You don't see anything in the custom strip right now, because for that you have to go up to setup, go to custom strip, you choose the one that you're interested in, and let's say I want this channel here to be in that first slot, and maybe this one will go here, and then we'll do a blank and a blank, and maybe we'll go, those are inputs, let's grab an effects, let's go effects one return can kind of sit right there, we'll hit another blank, maybe we'll do a DCA and grab DCA two, whatever I wanted to create here I could, and then I can come back over to input and when I look at custom one it shows me whatever I just had there so I can click on something move it around uh, from a processing standpoint there's custom one custom two I can adjust the faders uh, it's pretty cool so if I hit standard then I'm gonna see just all the inputs right there and I can click on these boxes right here to see what I want to do by the way this I'm running this on a computer right now but on the iPad you'd be tapping these things instead on any mixing board that's digital, if you select a channel, then these are the contextual things for that channel. Here's the preamp. I can adjust the gain. I can hold and put phantom power on. There's a pad on this one right now. Or adjust the delay, which is not an effect delay. That's more like getting things in sync. There's a high pass filter. Here's the gate. Insert, 
parametric EQ, compressors. You'll notice that the compressor is not currently showing anything. If I turn it on, that's the side chain actually. Over here is the on for the compressor. And then I can drag and adjust the ratio or the threshold. If this button here isn't on, even if you see some stuff, then the compressor is not being part of the signal. When the in button is on, it means it's in the path and it's being used. When it's not on, it's out of the path and it's not being used. Um, but if I click and I go to a different channel, you can see now I'm on Logan up here, but I'm still on this compressor tab, so I can go and make sweeping changes. If I wanted to copy and paste from here, oh, maybe I can't do it. So you're supposed to be able to copy and paste a channel um, by right-clicking or by double-tapping in here, and I don't see how to do that right now. So, oh well, sorry about that. Um, so that's how you're going to do most of your normal controls in here. On the right side, you're going to see it says main LR. That means when I pull this fader up and down, I'm actually affecting the main mix. Here's aux 1, and when I do aux 1, now I'm not affecting the main mix anymore. I'm affecting whatever is in aux 1. Now you'll notice right up at the top, right here, it changed. It says IEM1. That's the name of the mix bus that I'm affecting. I want to adjust mix in your monitor 2 or 7 is called video in this one. And I can go up or down. You'll see that the color that I have these things is being shown underneath, which is helpful to remember what's going on. And then if I come back up top, I'm done with this. I can either click on this again, and it'll jump back to main, or I could just click on main. Be careful. Know what you're mixing before you go mess with a bunch of things. Do I want to be on main or do I want to be somewhere else? And when I'm somewhere else, get back to main before you go and run a bunch of things. You can click on routing to see some advanced routing options with some, uh, some settings in here, like um, you can tell it to be pre-fader, post-fader, mute groups, um, et cetera. Um, and there's some extra routing options depending on the type of thing that you're looking at. So if I'm over here in routing, I'm currently looking at inputs, but I could go to mixes, choose in-ear monitor 8, and then uh, there it is right there. And it's got the pre-fade or post-fade for every single channel if I wanted to see it that way. Um, there's ways to do multiple ways to do many of these things. I am not attempting to spend time teaching you every single thing that you can do, you're going to have to look at a manual to learn about it. Mutes are here um, on the top, or if you wanted to, to pr use headphones to listen, you have to have headphones connected to the board uh, or something else that's able to pull the headphone mix in. But that's like the solo button in some boards or the Q button. Meters to see what's going on. There's custom, or you can look at um, all the inputs or the outputs and just see what's really happening. Nothing's going on in here right now. You'll see over here the audience mic is live and, and hearing some things. Here's the scene list. And so if you wanted to load up a particular scene, I could click in here and say go. And now I'm gonna, I pulled up Fensky Chapel instead. So here I'm in processing. And these channels are different than they were in the other one. Um, there's a bunch of setup options uh, within. Is utility for this is an auto mixer and this is for a playback thing. If you don't know what these are, don't mess with that stuff. And by the way, the utility button on the SQ Physical Desk has more options than this. That's where some of the data transferring patches go. And over here, you've even got I/O patching where you can go through the patch screen and say where what I want where. So that's just a quick look at how the SQ MixPad app works. I'm going to have a separate routing uh, video for both the Yoakum room and for the broadcast room where I talk through this screen in a little bit more detail and some specific things that matter to it uh, and also a few documents. But if I were to come up here to these uh, this hamburger menu and choose log out, I'm no longer attached to that mixer. If I wanted to be on the broadcast mixer instead, now I'm connected to the broadcast mixer and I can see the settings for that particular mixer and go and make changes as necessary. So that's how you use the SQ MixPad app and look for my videos about signal flow because they're very important.